the uh, translation of the Bible that you have, you might see a couple of different words here for Simon. Matthew chapter 10, verse 4, again, a list of the apostles, and we get here jumping in uh, at verse 4, Simon the Zealot, or your Bible might read Simon the Canaanian, or it might read Simon the Canaanite. So depending on what translation you might have, might have something different. The actual word in uh, the Greek is Canaanian. And so in our study guide, I have an explanation of these names. Canaanian is an Aramaic word. Uh, so a kind of a common word of the Palestinian area in the first century, an Aramaic word. It means the zealous one. That's what Canaanian means. That word is not associated with Cana, with Canaanite, with Canaan. That is a completely different word. And if your Bible has the translation of Simon the Canaanite, uh, that is a misinterpretation of that word. They, they, they're similar, but they are two different words. Uh, he, was, it, he may have been a Canaanite. But that's not the word that's there. Canaanite and Canaanian, two different words meaning two different things. Canaanite is somebody from Cana, from Canaan. Canaanian is a word that means zealous one. And so in Luke, Luke actually does not say Canaanian. Luke uses the Greek word zealot, which means zealous one. Uh, and so that's why you have little different uh, translations there, depending on on what you've uh, who translated it, on what word they put in there. But the original word, as best we can tell, is Canaanian, which means the zealous one. And so Simon was given the name of a zealot, and we knew of the zealots in the days of Jesus. The zealots were a militant political group in the days of Jesus, before Jesus, and then grew in power through the lifetime of Jesus, and then to full strength in 66 AD, where they actually overthrew the Roman government in Jerusalem, and they took control for four years of the Holy Land, and so the zealots were in control uh, for those four years until Rome mustered their army and marched to Jerusalem and absolutely wiped everything out. Uh, but anyway, those were the zealots. Uh, and so we, we see of uh, Judas Iscariot was called a zealot. Uh, or Simon may have been kind of of that uh, group at, at one point, uh, but now he's not. Now he's, now he's with Christ and, and things are different now, but he may have had some roots uh, in the zealot movement. So Simon, so with that, that's really all we have of Simon. We don't have uh, stories of, of, of Simon and speaking roles of Simon. We just know he was always there. And so with Simon, our takeaway, our lesson from him, we're going to find in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1. So turn with me to Proverbs 22, verse 1. Let me uh, pop up uh, some verses there. You can see them on the screen. Proverbs 22, Verse 1. And I'm going to read for us here, Proverbs 22, verse 1. It says this, A good name is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. Now, what's in a name? Now, Simon didn't have a bad reputation, so I, I want us to establish that. I'm not saying... Simon had a bad name, and, and, and he, he should have known better. No, Simon didn't have a bad name. Simon must have been of good character, trustworthy. Christ chose him and, as an apostle, and, and we don't see him getting caught up like Judas got caught up in the zealous movement, uh, possibly. Simon doesn't appear to have been caught up in that. He, so he didn't have a bad name. So I want to clear that up. Don't, don't think I'm saying Simon had a bad name. But we can learn a lesson. We we'll call him Simon the Zealot. Um, you know, the importance of names and what it means. And so 
even Simon had this name, whether it was his fault or not. We see it in scripture, Simon the Canaanian, the zealous one, or Simon the zealot. And because that name has been attached to him, it leads us down a path of, of a discussion. What kind of character did he have? Was he one of these militant type people, political type group? You know, it, it just leads to speculation that we, we don't really know, you know what the background was, but it just shows the importance of the names that are attached to us. And, and what we as followers of God, we ought to be careful with our names and our reputations, that they are honest and trustworthy and loving and kind. If they're not, then we, we lose our ability to, to share the love of God. We've got a, a bad name. And so we need to be serious about being people who are trustworthy and honest and, and that type of thing. It's important. And so we just kind of see it from Simon, just on the name that's tacked on to him, not of his fault uh, or anything like that that we know of. Simon wasn't uh, a, a wayward fellow, as we, we may think when we hear like the zealot, but, but we just can see just the importance of names. And so here's what I want us to take away for us today. We've already been mentioning it, but let's uh, turn now to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 way back in the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. We read this, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And to my people, these are the words of God, and my people who are called by my name, they humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin I will heal their land. The key I want us to see in that passage is look at what God says about us and our name. My people who are called by my name. We know that name today to be Christians. We call ourselves that after the name of Christ. Christians means little Christ, followers of Christ. And when we take on that name, That's important. It becomes important how we carry ourselves, how we conduct ourselves. If we call ourselves Christians and we are hateful, and prejudiced, and angry, and bitter, all those things, but we call ourselves Christians, what are we telling the world? We're giving mixed signals. We're, we're, we're not giving them the truth. We're not giving them the, what we ought to be showing them. And so for Christians today, I want us all to realize just how important our name is. And, and, and our most important name is the one that we've given, that's been given, it's after Christ, that we are Christians. We, we've got to act like it. We've got to know what that means. We've got to act like it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, we're reminded of this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Now, if I have any old school RA, Royal Ambassadors, listening to this Bible study. Any of our boys who grew up in the Baptist church and went to RAs, 2 Corinthians 5.20, very uh, important verse. You may know it right off if you remember it from learning it as a boy and having to quote it at your meetings. 2 Corinthians 5.20, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. We as Christians always need to remember we, no matter what situation we're in, no matter where we are in life, we are ambassadors for Christ. So no matter what's going on, we've got to remember what our name is. We've got to act a certain way because of it, because our God is worthy of us acting a certain way. Our God is worthy of us giving him uh, the credit, the attention, and, and obeying his commands, and being a people who are, are loving and kind and all those things, and honest, just as God would have us be. And so as we look at Simon here, he was called Simon the Canaanian, Simon the Zealous One, Simon the Zealot, and that leads us to all kinds of speculation as to 
what his past might have been, what he was maybe involved in. And like I said, of no fault of his own, that may have been something in his past. And, and he may have left that behind. And now he is following Christ. And I just believe for sure he, he's with Christ now. His life is probably is different than what it, whatever it was. But because that name stuck, it, it, it kind of you know leads that. You see the importance of a name. And then again, it might mean absolutely nothing at all. They may have called him Simon the, the zealous one just because when Simon was in, he was all in. Whatever it was, he may have had nothing to do with the zealot movement uh, that have that title. It just means he's zealous. Um, but again, you see the importance of names leads to a lot of speculation. We just don't know. So for us, now for us in our day, let's remember what our name is. We are Christians first. Before we are anything else, we are Christians. That's the name that we have accepted. That's the name we have committed to. And so you and I need to remember because of that, there are responsibilities from us. There are expectations upon the way we live and the way we we act. And so let's be the Christians that this world needs to see so that we can give the proper service to our God. I want to thank you so much for tuning in for this midweek Bible study on Simon. Next week, as I said, we close out our apostles by looking at the last one, Thomas. And so Thomas is one of my favorites. We call him Doubting Thomas, but I hope with some of the things we take a look at next week, uh, we'll maybe see him a little different. Maybe that's a title that's kind of unfairly given to Thomas um, as, as a permanent type uh, title. Uh, so uh, we'll take a look at Thomas next week. I hope everyone has a great week. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you that you bestow your name upon us. That Father, you are willing to claim us when we are such a wayward people. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. And so, Lord, help us to work hard each and every day to live up to your name, to strive to be holy like you are holy to strive to share love instead of hatred. Father, you deserve our effort. And so, Lord, help us as your people to give you that effort for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In just a few minutes at 12 o'clock, we will be broadcasting our final Lenten season message. And so hope you'll tune back in uh, if you're available and watch our final uh, Lenten message. Have a great week. Goodbye.